Well, first, I just want to say I'm in tears, right, standing next to these two. This is um, probably one of the greatest moments of my life. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't oh. have a job. I wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for you. And I remember living in Orange County and being very young and before I was in Save Ferris and going to see you play and dreaming of being able to do what I do today. So thank you. Good. I'm glad we were of service. I'm just like wiping the tears away. What's the memory that's like most prominent in your mind right now when you think back? I mean, you're here standing in front of these people you respect so much. What, what really comes to mind? Well, I remember hearing um, on my radio missing words, and I just, it was, you know, my first exposure to ska music, and the fact that there was a female voice really resonated with me because there weren't a lot of female voices that I could relate to. I mean, Monique, you went on and on about just how, how impactful it was to hear a female voice for a ska band on the radio in Los Angeles back in the day. Who was that for you? Who was that voice that, that you heard as a, as a young, aspiring artist that really made you believe you could do it? Probably Millie. Um, at that time, he had out My Boy Lollipop. I was not particularly kind of, you know, interested in what sort of gender somebody was mm. because, I mean, it was the music. I mean, people didn't listen to ska music. People didn't listen to reggae music particularly. I was interesting you were saying about On My Radio because Gwen St Stefani also says that she started out singing On My Radio um, as some talent contest, I think, in Anaheim when I met her. I yeah, thought that was quite amazing. cute. Yeah, so you see? So you see? Well, that's great because, you know, there's two young ladies yes. who have uh, who have done very well. Very important to me. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up Gwen because I want to take it back to 1997 for just a quick second. I think it's a big year in both of your journeys because in 1997, Gwen Stefani calls you guys up and says, I want to bring you guys out on the road for the No Doubt Tour. And then also that's your major label debut. What was it like in 1997? Can you capture it from both of your perspectives at that time? It was kind of strange, really, because the people that were into to Gwen and, and no doubt were little teeny boppers and they were about 10. And there's us bundling out on stage and we're playing to 10 year olds who are all kind of scratching their heads saying, well, they sound a bit like what they do. And but we'd always win them over by the end of the but but that was strange. That was strange. You talked about my boy Lollipop, which is interesting because before Say Ferris, I was in an all girl traditional ska band we only did covers and my boy lollipop was one of the songs it was called the shanties we had so yeah. much fun what are you most excited about looking forward going into 2020 here i have to finish this full-length record right it's been painful and wonderful because um i've definitely come a long way from being 20 in orange county and being like everything's awesome <laughs> you know i approach what say ferris does as an adult now writing new songs that resonate with um, not only myself, but others who are looking for something a little bit deeper. I'm most excited about seeing what's going to happen in Britain. It's a very, very divided country that we live in. And uh, it was very, very divided in 1979 when we first started. In some ways, it feels like history repeating itself. And if we can do anything at all, and particularly as people of color, to influence what is happening with our music and what we've always stood for through two-tone. That's, that, that, that's how I see the future for us.